Hi, my name is Fritzi Horstman, and welcome to Compassion in Action. My guest today is Byron Katie. Byron Katie is the author of the work, and here's a bio of Byron Katie. In 1986, at the bottom of a 10-year spiral into depression and self-loathing, Byron Katie woke up one morning in a state of joy. She realized that when she believed her stressful thoughts, she suffered, but that when she questioned them, she didn't suffer, and that this is true for every human being. Her simple yet powerful process of self-inquiry, which she calls the work, consists of four questions and the turnaround, which is a way of experiencing the opposite of what you believe. Byron Katie has been bringing the work to millions of people for more than 30 years. Her books include the best-selling Loving What Is, now in a revised edition, I Need Your Love, Is That True?, A Thousand Names for Joy, and A Mind at Home with Itself. For more information, visit thework.com. I'd also like to read Byron Katie's Invitation. She writes, an invitation to inquiry. Welcome to the work. I discovered that when I believed my thoughts, I suffered. But when I didn't believe them, I didn't suffer. And that this is true for every human being. Freedom is as simple as that. I found that suffering is optional. I found joy within me that has never disappeared. Not for a single moment. That joy is in everyone always. And I invite you not to believe me. I invite you to test it for yourself. Byron Katie. Byron Katie, welcome to Compassion in Action. Hi, Fritzy. <laughs> Hi, Katie. How are you? Hi. Oh, just so grateful for your good work in this world with those prisons. Oh, oh thank what a you. privilege, huh? Right? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> yes and what a privilege to be here with you just thank you i've been work you know i've been doing the work for the past couple of days mm -hmm. to get ready with you and i got to see my greatest hits of my of my painful thoughts and mm -hmm. and what a gift you know they're just i just know anything like it self-inquiry it's just self-inquiry. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And the wisdom is right there. Right there. I, and I, I'm going to just give you a couple of the thoughts I came up with. Mm -hmm. And then my turnarounds just to launch the conversation, because I really want the men and women in prison to get a handle on how every thought that comes through, if it's painful... Yeah. is is not the truth yeah if if it's painful yeah and we can just together make this just as clear as possible for them to understand how mm. yeah. yes to understand something that we can both speak to so it so simple but it's it doesn't seem possible and and, and yet yes it is yeah, uh, I've done your work. I I met you and worked with you twenty years ago, mm -hmm. right when I was pregnant. And this these past three days, I really just got it. I mm -hmm. just just got it. And wow, and wow. So here's a couple of the the complaints. Complaint the complaints. I wrote down the complaints. One of the complaints was, this person annoys me because he complains a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Well, who's complaining? I'm mm -hmm. complaining about this person complaining. Mm hmm. So who's complaining a lot? Wow. Just mm -hmm. that. So simple. And it wakes us up. But um, it's, um, it's not so easily understood. Like you have this like the cap cup the last couple of days, you just you just get it. But boy, this, yeah, <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's, oh, it's grace. 
Yes. And it, it, things are a little different now. Um, another of my greatest hits was with what my ex-boyfriend and uh, he betrayed me, right? He betrayed me. I keep running the script that he's betraying me. Who's betraying who? He's gone. He's in the past. This is 40 <laughs> years ago. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So powerful. Yeah, and it changes everything. And, and, and you know, one more. Um, she's violent. Mm. Now, my thoughts about her are violent, right? So who's being violent? Who's being violent here? But so it's basically everything that goes through the transom needs to be looked at if it's if it's painful. I mean, I think all of them, but the big ones are, look what he did to me. Look what she did to me. Yeah, and how do we react when we believe the thought we end up in prison and we can justify it and wonder how 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 did we get here? Yeah. Yes, and so with prison, some of the most painful thoughts I think for what I've been um, what I've been witnessing is I'm no good, I'm a bad person. So, and I've had those thoughts too, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, they're universal. Yeah, yeah, and no yeah. new stressful thoughts are universal, and then the ego, you know, it, it it attaches to whatever will give it the identity that is going to lock it in. And mm. yes, and who would I be without that thought? Mm. I'm a bad person. And then that turnaround, so powerful. I'm a good person. And the ego it would just repel from that. No, I'm in prison. I'm a bad person. And, ah, uh, but no, I'm a good person. Just hang in. Just ponder that. You know, just find one, one good thing about you. One thing you did today, right down to... You know, for me, it's I brushed my teeth. I'm a good person. You know, we can start with the with with the personal when we're just so locked into I'm a bad person, and ah, uh, oh, I spent so many years working in prisons with uh, with uh, with those guys and and occasionally when women's prisons and teenage uh, lockups and what a privilege yes yes and i truly believe they are the critical agents of change in the world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because when they get you know, it we can look at the people, yes, and we can look at, there are, there are people um, in, you know, not in prison that are living in the prisons of the mind. And prison is prison and no way out that they can find and we get desperate and then we, we end up in, you know, behind with real bars and, uh, or, <clears throat> or just suffer the prison of the mind. But we can be in prison and free ourselves from prison. And I've seen it happen over and over and over. And some, some of the people I've worked with in prisons, um, most of my time is spent in men's uh, prisons, but I've seen them get free and then become teachers of the work within and, and lead circles of self-inquiry. And the more um, that person um, leads that group, the, the more deeply uh, their mind runs and the freer they get. And then that becomes contagious and contagious. And 
Yeah. Yeah, and they get to see when other people are not free and then helping them find their freedom. Yeah, yeah it, it, it gives them a whole new life, a whole new life. I've seen people uh, wanting to go back to prison for their fellows, you know, their, their, their friends, because uh, they're free in or out of prison. So they can go in and help and support those that um, that they become so close to and and um, grateful for. Yeah. So I have a thought that um, that I think we need to address here, which is they killed my son. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, um, is this yours or just no? It's not. Um, but I have a painful thought about my son. It's that I've hurt my son. Okay, so um, when you when you um, are considering I kill my son, what you mean is I I really hurt I hurt my son like something like he's scarred for life. <laughs> yes, I have traumatized my son. That is. I see. Yeah. That's the thought that uh -huh. is the most painful thought I have ever had in my life. Okay, so let's let's work through that. So, uh, what is the situation that comes to your mind when you think the thought you traumatized your son? An uh, anchor there in that situation, that time and place where you said what you said, you did what you did um, toward your son. What is the situation? There could be a thousand, but, you know, anchor in one that comes to mind. What comes to mind is uh, we're sitting in the car and he's playing with the phone. Um, I'm working on navigating and I'm getting distracted and stressed out driving. So I pull over and I yell at him and I send so much anger and vitriol and and uh, disgust and and hate to him. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so to be there in that situation, witness you, feel that, look at your son. Is he cowering? Is he trying to apologize? Is he just quiet? Is he just look at him, get really, 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 really? Does he attempt to defend and you interrupt him? Just just get in touch with whatever was there, just anchor in that situation then. You traumatized your son. Is it true? Now look at him. Is he courageous? Did he argue back? Did he just go silent? How old was he? He was in eight. Eight, eight years old and that's shut down. He shut down. Okay, shut down. And does he look at you? No, you he's trying to head? escape in the car. He's just trying to be as still as possible. Okay. So he's trying to be as still as possible. You're both in the front seat. Yeah. You've traumatized your son. Is it true? Now, this is interesting because we can't know another person's mind, but the ego is so sure I traumatized my son. So look at your son. Does he have a way of protecting himself? Does he go into his own world? You know, there are things we can't know, but look at him. Is he looking at you? Is he looking away? Is he? Uh, I don't know that part, but I, and I don't know if I traumatized him. You're right. I don't know that. I I know I traumatized myself. I do know that okay. by doing that. So I do rather, know that. So rather than jumping ahead, okay, <laughs> notice how you react. Maybe you didn't have the thought, I traumatized my son until years later. 
Now go to the place where it hit you, you traumatized your son. Maybe you heard it in a lecture or a, a read it in a book or watched a movie when you had the thought, I've, I've traumatized my son. Maybe it was a, a, your son not wanting to go to a school function and, and um, you had the thought, I traumatized my son. So find that moment when it came to you later in his life. That situation where you you really, you really locked into, I traumatized my son. Uh, I don't remember the first time, but I know a, it, it kept coming up when he would get reactive and mirror some of the things I had done to him. Okay, so he took on your behaviors as a way of communicating back to you and others in his life. So you traumatized your son. So anchor there when he, where he's acting out in that situation. Listen to him. Respectfully, just listen to him. Look at him. You traumatized, you traumatized your son. Notice how you react. What happens emotionally when you think the thought I traumatized my son. I feel shame. I feel uh, low. I feel bad. I feel um, I feel like I'm a bad mother. Uh, and sad. Yeah. No, you can't be sad. If you're not witnessing those images of the past in that situation where he's acting out. Yeah, I'm bringing all those images up right now. Yeah. Do you see how the ego offers up proof? Mm. Takes the moment and then it shows the past, the past past the past even if it's not the past it those images of the apparent past the, those images of the past are brought up in that situation where your son is acting out and you're believing the thought i traumatized my son to be there now witnessing that now notice the difference between your thoughts and your son. In other words, who would you be in that situation without the thought, I traumatized my son? Now, listen to him the way you could not do when he was that little, about eight-year-old in the car. Listen to your older son in that situation without those images of past, future. Listen, get connected. He's hurting. I want to help him. That's it. That's all I got. Yeah. Well, just listen. Yeah. You've got that. That's a bit. That's a. That's a lot. Now, just listen. I don't hear that he's harming you physically. I don't hear any of that. Just listen. Give him in that situation what you couldn't give him growing up, like that little eight-year-old. And what is he saying? What do you hear him say? I can't figure it out. I don't know how to do it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm stressed out. That's who you are without it. You're available, you're a mother, you're patient, you're listening, you're open. I traumatized my son. You see an opposite? Try, I traumatized myself. I traumatized myself. 
Yeah. That I do I've done that many times now, watching him grow up. And then you notice that little eight year old in the car. You were seeing those images of the future of what he's going to do next, what he's going to say next. He's going to continue to interrupt you and move your focus when you're trying so hard to get focused. Yeah. And he yeah. wasn't necessarily doing that. He was just in the moment, just saying what he's saying. Yeah. But just ego projects he's not going to stop. Uh -huh. And it's remembering the past where he would just bothering you, bothering you, moving your focus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that wasn't him. That was your ego flipping you out of past future. Watching that movie in your head, just like the adult, you know, this traumatized you. It's like I traumatized my son. I traumatized myself. <sighs> what are you noticing? What are you becoming aware of? Th this image of him traumatizing him has been a movie in my life uh, for 10 or 12 years now. And about 11 years now and it is it is on replay and replay every time I think about myself as a mother and um I mean yes so let's break let's break the trauma I traumatized my son I traumatized myself now listen to your son in that situation where he doesn't know how to do it he's telling you he doesn't know how to do it he doesn't know yeah. okay so be there now and who would you be without the thought? I traumatized my son. Now just listen to him. You don't have to change him. You don't have to fix him. You don't have to show him the way. Nothing. Just don't traumatize your son. You know, I traumatized my son. I didn't traumatize my son. Who would you be without the, those thoughts? Now just see what it looks like not to be traumatized, Fritzy. Listen to him. Notice, other than what he's thinking and believing, he's okay, trying to find his way. He's telling you, I don't know how to do it. Yeah. And I'm just there for him. I'm just there for him. Without the trauma. Yes. Yes. And I have a year left with him. I can do this now. I can be with him for a full year without traumatizing him or myself. I can just be there with him. Now, specifically, he he's saying... As I recall, um, he's saying, um, I can't do this, or I don't know how to do this. Um, what was it he was saying? Uh, yeah, he was doing a math problem, and it was frustrating him, and he was just really acting out or just mm -hmm. demonstrating his frustration. Yeah, saying he didn't know how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just let him have that. He's... He's got a problem now, just silently, as we're sitting here together now, just silently, when you feel like he's open to it, not before, but when you feel he's open to it, just say, I'd like to help you if you're open to it. Or you might say, how can I support you? I see how difficult this is for you. Now notice he might shut you down. He might just expect it. <laughs> yeah. You're living a life with your son without the trauma. 
yeah, and I'm just showing up for him, and that's enough. That's all I can do. And oh my gosh, they begin to trust us. And, you know, my children, they have no right to trust me, and they do. This is not new work for me. Yeah. And they know <laughs> math is my weakest. <laughs> <laughs> <Not an English. laughs> they trust if I if 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 there's any way I can or I can get them a tutor. Yeah, yeah, and but that would be up to them. I could offer a tutor. Yeah, and he's he's brilliant, and uh, when he quiets down, he figures it out. So. There it is. When you quiet down, he, it's, it's the oddest thing that happens. Like you quiet down and he just runs out of steam and begins to notice that there's no trauma coming at him from you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it has been shifting, but this is, this is a really big piece that we're doing right now because big deal. Yeah. I learned that um, my children can find their way without me. That love is the power and love for me is listening without interjecting or trying to save them. The ego really wants to do all that, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's that I know mind. You know, I know I can fix him. Well, you know, we've had years of <laughs> trying that, so maybe he can fix himself and I can just be here to support it. Wow. That is, that is generosity, isn't it? It is. It's true generosity. It's it's compassion, it's generosity, it's listening, it's love, it's connection, it's just all those good things. It's mothering. It's connection and mm -hmm. uh, and connection you say is the is is one of the keys here. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean just be there now. Look how connected you are. He doesn't have to connect. Look how connected you are. And you haven't said or done anything to fix him. You just listen and you might say something like, just know I'm here for you. That idea of fixing him, right? That is such a painful idea. Mm, 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 mm. It is. It is. And I transmitted that to him as there's, there's, and there, I, yeah. That, that's where the word trauma comes from. You know, there, we have traumatized them. We've traumatized ourselves, and then they carry on the, the tradition. <laughs> and, and you can break that chain. I know if, you know, I can do it, you can do it. Yeah, well, I feel I feel much more empowered today to do it because I have a different awareness about it now. Like it's now. What do you want in that situation where he has that math problem, and and um, I'm assuming math that math problem, and he just can't do it. He thinks, and he's in that agitated state. Um, what do you What do you want him to think, say, feel, or do? I want him to do whatever he wants to do. I think that's that's it. I I want him to figure it out if he wants to. Okay. And if now go back into your your who you were in that situation, anchor there. Notice how you reacted. What did you say? What did you do when he's having that math problem? Oh, I wanted to I control. Want I wanted to control everything. Mm -hmm and fix it and apply it and get under it and okay yeah i wanted it i wanted it well i wanted it to stop i wanted him to stop his tantrum or whatever i 
Okay, now notice how you treat him when you think the thought, I want him to stop that tant tantruming and settle down and focus. Yeah. Notice how you react, what you say, what you do when he's in that state, in that situation. Yeah, I, I, I think it reminds me of my family back, back when my mother was yelling at me. And um, there she is, <laughs> living through you. Yeah. 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 Trauma. Yeah. Yeah. So you want him to stop his tantrum. So now just be still. Give him no advice, nothing. I want him to just be there with him, listening, watching him act out listening, just being there, not trying to change him, not trying to fix him. I want him to stop his tantrum, turned around. I want me to stop my tantrum. My tantrum, yeah. Trying yeah. to fix him, trying to force him to hear me, trying to, if he. Yeah, just so much pain and violence. You, you know, I don't even think of it that way. It's like it feels justified. It feels superior. We think it's good mothering and, and, and being a responsible parent. And, and, and he's having no piece of that. No. Get out of my life, Mom. Get out. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got that eight-year-old in him. Eight-year-old all the way up to that just like you do. Yeah. So I want him to stop his tantrum, turn around. Now just be there with him. Anchor there, see him in your mind's eye. And then take this sleep. I don't want him to stop his tantrum. I don't want him to stop his tantrum. Let him be, just get connected. Look at your son. Notice his frustration, his heart, his... Just notice. I want him to stop his tantrum. I want me to stop my tantrum. Just let him be. And another turn around. I don't want him to stop his tantrum. I don't want him to stop his tantrum. No, he can do what he needs to do. That's how he finds his way. It's how he has had to find his way. He's had to get maybe louder than you've been, more protect his, his mind from listening to you and finding workable situations at the same time. And you're giving him all that space. He knows how to find his way, and you're dropping half of that off his, half of his burden. Just by trusting, he'll find his way. He always has. You know, creating the situation again feels like it's real in a, in a sense. It feels like we're doing this to him in a way, and I don't know if that's what's happening, but it feels almost like we're doing this for him and for me. And you mean this, our, our work together? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If it, if it's for you, it works for him. Yeah. You know, we're becoming better mothers and that makes, that makes kinder, more understanding mother for our children. Oh, yeah, the, there's so many parents in prison, you know? Yeah, child abuse, um, and there's so many children that are now adults in prison, and this, these traumas, you know, we're just getting a snapshot that is a big deal. It's a big deal. It's life-altering 
But the ego will take the enlightenment, chew it up, and justify itself, just like it's always done. Um, <clears throat> that's why I suggest a full worksheet, you know, from number one to six. Yes. And situation with your son when he's got the math problem, or the one in the um, car of the eight-year-old. And then another one will come up, and then that's another worksheet. And then your ego will tell you, oh, I've got this handle. Things are really working well now. And it's like, thank yourself for sharing. And you lose your, you, you lose your patience again. Then, then it's another worksheet. Or you feel like you're almost ready to leave him to his homework. You go do your homework, your internal homework. Yeah. Yeah, I I mean almost every thought needs work, needs some work on it. Well, it's um it's like riding a bicycle. You know, we it's it's clumsy at first. And then it's, we find we're just riding it consciously in real time even without the questions, because you've got enough worksheets under your belt that life begins to make sense. Boy, oh boy. Um, oh my goodness. The, my daughter, when the work found me, she was in her teens, and uh, she just got her driver's license. And uh, I was always so guilty. Of course, I had to buy her a brand new red Camaro that was really hot in those days. And, um, <laughs> and here she was, alcoholic and drug addicted, as it turned out. And I'm so full of guilt that, um, and, um, and the work, the work found me. And she would say, she would she wouldn't even say goodbye. She'd just give me the look at night and she was into drugs and alcohol and just take off in that car. And, and uh, I, I really understood the worst thing I could do is try to stop her because she'd win and she'd win in the end. How would she win? I don't understand. She'd take the key, the the keys or call a friend, and they would go in their car. I oh. can't, can't stop someone that you can't stop. You know what am I going to do? Lock her in a room? I mean, that lock doesn't last, last long. It just doesn't. It doesn't work. So uh, one day she just call me and said, Mom, I can't do this anymore. Whatever you're doing with those people, please do it with me. But I let her go to the death countless times. And I had the work. I had the work, and I would just sit there with pencil and paper, and uh, I would see her just dead with, you know, in the dark with no one. She's screaming for me, and there's no one that can hear her, and she's in agony. and. And I do a worksheet on that as though it were happening. And it was certainly happening in my head. I was being traumatized by the ego. And then I, I would just, it takes a lot of courage to do this work. But it's, um, we become more responsible as parents, not less. I mean, it sure, it sure seems risky, you know, let our children go. Well, nothing we have to do, but they go whether we let them go or not just like your son he you know in the car not 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 easy to stop and then there's resentment and with the math problem <sighs> interfere it sets him back yes he's got a good mind and you're you, through you he's allowed to use it and he begins to to see that you trust him to find his way, and that gives him all the security. That just, that's, in, it's such a shift. It, it is a turnaround. Yeah, I'm, I'm letting him go. It's his, 
hard of a thing I've ever done, but uh, mm -hmm. but he's got to find his way. I can't I can't do that for him. Well, you've you've given it your best shot. So when you say that, you're really an expert. You know, you, you can't stop him. Can't can't stop him. He'll. Well, you're into some really good stuff. I'm so glad we have this time together. Yes, and um, I asked a couple of the men in prison if they had a, anything they wanted to ask. Mm -hmm. So I have one, which um, I think it's, well, I'll just read it and we'll see. Okay. He said, my nephew was murdered on April 5th, 2023. Since then, I've had numerous conversations with my sister. During those conversations, I could tell that she was blaming herself for his murder. She would also say that she had to stay strong for her three children who lost their older brother. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I asked her to clarify what she meant by she has to stay strong. She said she can't give up as if that were a present thought. She's also angry with the man who murdered her son. Yeah. I do a worksheet. What, what I recommend to anyone is what I would recommend to myself always. But I do a worksheet on um, the man who murdered on my sister. It was his sister's. His nephew. Yeah, his, yeah. Yeah, his sister's son. Yeah. I do on a worksheet on that murderer, whether I'd ever seen him or met him before in my life. I do a worksheet on on that man who murdered the son and because the ego it it can easily do it from one to six on that worksheet on what we're thinking and believing about anyone that would murder a child or anyone for that matter that affects our life and and um <clears throat> and then a worksheet on a sister yes like she'll never get over this, you know. Is it true? That's so powerful. And then notice how you react. How do you talk to your sister when you hang up the phone? How do you treat yourself? Notice the images of past and future in your head when you think the thought, "My sister will never get over this." Mm. Yeah, the images of past. And turn it around. You know, my sister will get over this. And if 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 this man really sits in it on that turnaround, he'll find she will get over it. And people talk about they, they, they don't get over it. They, they hang on to it all their lives. There are those moments. She'll never get over it. She will get over this. And when she's focused on one of the other children or when she's flushing the toilet or that moment when she goes to sleep she's over it i mean we can just find example after example she'll never get over it she will get over this well how could that be possible the ego says that's my child that's my my nephew and you know, you know it's just yeah we get over it the ego pulls it up that's how the ego if ego is a state of mind it's not a state of body it's identification and it's just you know images of past and future running in our head that aren't even real it's not the real past it's it's imagination it's not a real future in our head in the moment it's it's a ego play it's a, it's it's an illusion and when we see those images in our head that's the cause of why we kill it's the cause of all suffering can you expand on that that seems very important yes it's it's like um if if i if i say the word banana you just saw banana in your mind's eye well, if I am thinking my sister will never get over her son's, my nephew's death, 
I can see an image of my sister. I can see an image of, of, of my nephew, maybe at the funeral or maybe alive and happy and then dead. And then all those images, they're horrific. Okay, so we have the word like banana and then you have the image. So the, so the name, the word, the name, and then the image that that hook matches the name that's life that's the ego's life so that is the cause of all sadness all fear all anger all of it it's a trance just the way you were able to be with your eight-year-old in the car you know, and you are awake to that trance. You're aware. You're imagining it. But there it is. So when you're when you're um, talking to um, anyway, that's a, a worksheet on um, on my sister. And I would say, um, you know, I'm just I'm traumatized at my sister. Um, over my nephew's death, she'll never get over it. And then go to number two, what do you want in that situation? I want my sister to be free of pain and trauma. And then number three on that judge your neighbor worksheet, that's number three is all about the um, advice for my sister. You know, my sister should in that situation where she's just dying of sadness my sister should and then just meditate in what 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 she sh what advice she should she shouldn't and then you, you you're going into your own wisdom when you fill in these worksheets and then later we're going to question everything every concept there anchored in the situation you know um fritzy i have a thing i call one two three mm -hmm. and it's um have you seen it yes it's so powerful they list um they list um complaints yes that's what i was doing this morning yeah uh, they just fill in complaints so then they learn the ego will just offer up this complaint and that complaint and 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 to uh to become aware of not just on um, uh, I complained about my son because um, I traumatized him um, you're in the car you see it when you're filling it in I complained about my mother because um, she never really cared about me and you're seeing a time and place yes Even it could, you, you could have had the thought a thousand times you're seeing a time and place and so you anchor in one so as as you direct as as you fill in that i complain become aware of the time and place the situation so then when you're doing the work when you're questioning what you what you've written one complaint at a time um then um, you anchor in that time and place and there are your answers you experienced it we experienced that together i watched you in both situations with your son and the answers are there they're not just something that we just answer out of the blue we anchor in a time and place and then it all starts to unravel and so it's it's similar we're bringing up the images the way we live in the past mm -hmm. but because we're anchoring it we're getting more information we're getting the wisdom out of well we had the thought and the images that is the situation and that's where the problem was so it's just handy dandy we'd anchor there <laughs> and, and enlighten ourselves to what we were unenlightened to in the situation that causes such havoc yes which you say what you said earlier is what allows us to be violent mm -hmm. allows us to justify our behavior mm -hmm. towards others so which is why i'm 
I'm so fascinated by your work for the people in prison because they're all working on why they did what they did to put them in prison. I mean, except for the people that are innocent, but they're even I working on I know them. why they're in prison. They were believing their thoughts. If I believed what they believed, I would be in prison too. But, but, but prison doesn't support them, support them to see the cause of their suffering. They can experience remorse and, um, and, um, and repent, you know, all, all of that. But it's not, it's, it's a big help and maybe they'll make it. But and if we don't know the cause of our suffering, the ego is going to justify anything. And it would go to prison to save another human being or someone they loved, like the sister. You know, it's like in, in a heated moment, yeah, you know, I die before I let so-and-so get away with that. Well, right. we can't. We can die in prison. Well, or, you know, if someone hurt my son, right? Mm -hmm. Where a Great example. Like, yeah, it's like I'm, you know, I'm going to take care of this. I don't care what happens. That's my kid. Yes, and there's got to be another way because in that your child could you lose their parent. It just doesn't make sense. Yes, but so like, well, how do we stop the baby from falling into the water? That's look to myself. What am I thinking and believing in that situation when I said that, when I did that, when I was 13, yesterday, uh, day before yesterday, anything that comes up that, that I experience guilt, that's a worksheet. Yeah. Yeah. So everything, the fear of the future and the regrets of the past are the images that come up in our brains which allow us to do things that we regret later. And, you know, they're, they're, it's the ego's busy justifying it before they act. Or being a victim. Mm -hmm. Look what they did to me. Exactly. That's, that's really good. Yeah, so it's, this is allowed, this is okay. Or look what they did to me. Mm -hmm. And and this is worth it. This is worth it. Well, no, it's not. Yeah. Um, if I get away with it, it is. If I get caught, not so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people have said, I didn't really actually do the crime I'm being incarcerated for, but I have done 12 other things that I should be incarcerated uh -huh. for. But an interesting, another justification, right? Mm -hmm. Well, still, it could be, it, you know, it, there's some truth in it for, um, for some of them saying that, you know, it's, it's, um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm guilty. I know why I'm here. And I've done more. Yeah. Yes, and something had to stop me. Mm -hmm. Which is gratitude, right? Gratitude for stopping stopping this you know i would um i when i uh, for example i i was at a men's prison and i would go maybe once a month sometimes twice into a maximum security and um and they're tough and some of them such good dudes you know, that, that are so smart and, oh, just to die for a door. <laughs> and, yes. But, you know, they did the crime. Yes. And, and, uh, and some of them have done a lot of crimes. And the crimes they do out, out there, they do inside as well. And they're, they're, there they do you know they don't get caught always like they do 
out in the world. You know, we all get away with so much. But when one of those guys fall, like I'll work with someone that's vulnerable on the microphone in front of the um, the um, the entire population that they allow in. And um, I'll work with one vulnerable dude. And then those really smart guys, you know, the ones, the, 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 the really, the ones that are, really admired and mm-hmm. uh, running the place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, um, this one guy I'm working with, his mind is so open and one of those other guys get it because they're in the ob- audience and they're, they're not being challenged personally. Right. Yeah. Right. With, of that one, two, three, so we're all doing worksheets. And they're so smart, and they get it. The whole population starts shifting. It becomes not a sissy thing to do, or oh, you know, should I go to group today, or anything like that. They're just, they're in, and it's um, it's fascinating. The mind is fascinating. The ego is fascinating, and to understand it, it's what we're all looking for. It doesn't it doesn't matter what walk of of life we're all looking for a way out of the prison of the mind. Exactly. And I believe the people in prison actually have more um, motivation to get this. Yeah. 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 And when they get it, it gets to their families and gets to their communities. Yeah. Yeah. They're like people on the outside that just, just, they just have nothing left to lose. Just so depressed and so, feeling so hopeless and yeah yeah and and what a gift for them to realize their Mm -hmm. true nature Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and our true nature is um, it's pure goodness without opposite yeah pure pure just pure god consciousness yeah. Yeah. Yes. And thank you for reflecting that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I just can't help it. Some things are just true. And that's the thing that's true. That's why it's so, so painful when we when we think against it and then we act on it and then that keeps it going it's like it's identity is just like cementing itself in our head like um where we started with um i'm uh, uh, there's something wrong with me i'm a bad person and there's something right with me i'm a good person and and uh, to um to give them one of those one belief at a time worksheets and um, and take them through, I'm a bad person. Boy, boy, oh boy, oh boy, that would be, yeah, I can see a lot of value there. And to anchor in a time and place the way you did in the car and with your son's homework. Yeah, yeah, and your uh, prison video is in our our curriculum now, so they'll also get. Well, I hope it's a a, a good one. I think yeah. it is. I'll make sure. I'll I'll, I'll run it back by you. Uh, yeah. If it's if it's not, then um, then uh, I don't know if I'd have another. It's been that one's so old. It's um, I I'm I would. Uh, well, they have you, so that'll be my consolation. Yeah. Well, sometimes, but yeah, well, there's other, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it, see what the best is. And um, there's, uh, there's nothing we can't do when we can, when we question our thoughts. No, um, you question yours. And out of that experience, they'll, they'll, you know, they won't, if they stumble, you'll have already been there. Yes, one of the things I say to them is, why are you in prison? Mm. 
And, uh, you know, they say because I murdered someone or mm-hmm. armed robbery or whatever they say. Mm-hmm. And I just say, no, you're in prison because you're here. That's it. Yeah. There is no other, there is nothing else to talk about. This is in the present moment while you're here. Unless you're reliving that story that I murdered somebody. But I learned that from you. Yeah, and I would take him and do just before you murdered that human being or did what you did for those that did not murder. What were you thinking and believing? And then that would uh, be number one on the worksheet. Yes, and... And then they'd go to the want. We're going to be videotaping this putting this into prison. So would it be okay if I put the worksheet up on the video? Absolutely. All three of them. Okay. The the, um, I complain about Mm -hmm. and um, and the um, one belief at a time and the judge and neighbor worksheet. Yes. That way we just cut to the chase. Powerful. Yeah. It's right. to the chase, like 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 we were able to go back to um to that beautiful mother, just that it's like the best of mothers, and there we are, just in a a kind of trance, not knowing what to do and doing our best. Mm-hmm. Yes, in a trance, and there's more children that need her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If we're talking about the one whose son was murdered, or if we're talking about me, yeah, my son needs me. If I'm in a trance, well, what good am I doing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and or if we have our son in a trance, meaning I see the son of the past, the son of the future, am I with my son at all? Oh God! Oh. God, the son of the future, you know, if you don't, what if you don't pass? What if you don't succeed in school? What's, you know? Yeah. And, and when you, when you look at what's going on in your head, you know, I mean, you just went off on a train that shows you when you're, that's going on in your head, how you treat your son. And that's what allows one to think it's for their own good. I'm trying to spare them all of that stuff in my head. But it's um it it's a it's a journey to get to all those places we want for our children. And we start where we are with that one math problem, let him figure it out and just say, if you need help, here I am. I'm available. I love you. Done. Done. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh God. It's 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 grace is what this is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. And, and, and with itself. I'm sorry. What did you just say? A mind at home in itself, with itself, present. Yeah. Yeah, you said, you said in another interview, you said, there's no downside to being here now. Mm-hmm. Anything we need to accomplish or do or serve is right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gosh, it's a full, everything we need is here. You know, I have a cup to wash and a pencil I'd like just to, it's like this, I just want it like that. I don't have to do it, but it's nice. It's my world. It was okay the other way too. This is nice. (laughs) Yeah. In one of your books, you were talking about someone not picking up the trash. Mm -hmm. And so you just did it. Instead of going into a whole story Mm -hmm. you just house kept for the world for the planet yeah yeah and it's ongoing that way there's we're never bored (laughs) (laughs) 
Okay, precious heart. Okay. Okay, so anytime you need me, just let just let Keith know, and here I am. Thank you, Katie. And yes, and maybe we can figure a way to get a couple of the questions live with the guys and the women. Oh, and yeah. That'd be great. Okay, I will I'll work on that next. Hey, I'm in. Thank you. Bye you, bye. Can, you continue to blow me away. Oh, I love you. Love you. Bye bye. I love your son. Yes, I will. I will. Thank you, Byron Katie, for your wisdom and for your practical tools of the work and and helping me through um working through another piece of my past that um, I now feel better about. It's amazing for me what can happen when I look at the thoughts I have and realize they're all they're all images from the past that don't exist anymore. And the pain that I'm I'm calling up again and again and again to live in a place that doesn't exist. Um, this conversation is is a punctuation mark on the past couple of days that I've been doing this work, and I will continue to look at my thoughts and and the pain that I'm causing myself. So, if you are not in prison, please be sure to visit Byron Katie's website, thework.com, and read all of her books and listen to listen to her work she sometimes has online um sessions where she does the work with people and i highly recommend visiting that and if you're in prison um we will be putting the worksheets up at the end so that you can access this these questions and um i highly recommend doing these worksheets even just the com I complain about worksheet is so powerful when you when you look at what you complain about and then turn it around like I did. He is always wasting his life. Well, who am I? When I turn that around, I'm always wasting my life thinking about this person who's always wasting his life. So um, very powerful ways to really question what's going on up here. So... Thank you so much for watching and listening to this podcast. Please go to our website, CompassionPrisonProject.org, and like, subscribe to this podcast, and, and do the work. Um, what else can I say? It's I've been doing the work for 20 years, and I'm sure there's about 20 more years of work left for me, and I look forward to digging in again. Um, Thanks so much for listening and watching. Shift happens, and I'll see you next time.